Today's episode is brought to you by Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the show, go to patreon.com slash Joshua and become a $2 backer today and get early access to the new episodes. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below, but for now, on to today's episode. You're listening to the Augment Experience Podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Josh Ravellis. I'm a student, musician, and a gamer at heart. Join me as I sit down every week to talk about all the latest news in the technology, business, and video game world. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. My name is Joshua Bells. I am your host as usual, and I'm going to say welcome back to the show. Today is episode 264 of the show. Before we get started, we're just going to do a little bit of house quick Kirk Rounder because it only makes sense that we do the house cleaning. So let's get on with it. And yeah, yeah, I know people are going to tell me, Josh, this episode is coming out later than it normally does. And I'm like, well, yeah, we've already talked about this. Everyone at the end of the day, we're working. A little, you know, we got a work schedule. So it's kind of rough being an adult, you know, but at the end of the day, we still make time to do the show because let's be real. This has probably been one of the most wildest weeks when it comes to gaming news and outside of that even in the technology and business space because yes there has been a lot of shakeups happening and a lot of this stuff is important because i was surprised when i did the poll and we had two topics on the poll again if you guys don't follow us on instagram that's where we usually like to do the polls where one of them was talking about the vision pro which again we will have a separate conversation about that sucker because there are a lot of thoughts and important conversations that need to be had regarding you know, that piece of technology and also just the ramifications that it has for the VR slash AR space or even like the spatial computing market. But primarily we want to focus on the other topic, which again, thank you for everyone that voted on the poll. You guys are greatly appreciated and I greatly appreciate you. Also, thank you to the Patreon backers for supporting the show as well. You guys are also greatly appreciated as well. But the other topic that basically won on the poll was talking about this idea of Microsoft going third party and there's been a lot of concern i guess a lot of anger a lot of mixed emotions happening online some people thinking about the idea of one of the biggest players in the console space the video game market space choosing to go third party and possibly and again these are possibly hypothetical situations of them leaving the video game space as a first party developer and exclusively shifting towards a third party developer and not necessarily having their own console, their own platform anymore. Yeah, it does raise some concerns, but we also do want to tackle this in a manner that is not focused on opinions. That's not focused on hypothetical situations. I guess we can talk about them, but at the end of the day, these are the objective facts, which are nothing has been confirmed all of this is just pure hypothetical situation all of this is pure opinionated because again you can see articles from tom warren you see articles from the verge you see all these things so let's break this all down of what necessarily kickstarted this entire shitstorm that we call the internet because let's be real the internet is not necessarily the best place when it comes to getting all your information because again not everything is fact checked some things can be misconstrued or taken in a different context but in this situation we are making it clear that we are opening the floor for a conversation of what does the world look like if microsoft chose to go third party and leave the console space leaving only sony and nintendo as the primary players in this space so all of this conversation started happening a while back say in january when we started to hear rumblings of microsoft choosing to bring some of their first party ips and port them over to playstation and nintendo a lot of these conversations alluded to the idea of games like maybe hi-fi rush or even sea of thieves some of these games that make more sense to gain more i guess brand awareness specifically with a game like sea of thieves which is a you know, a live service style game and Hi-Fi Rush being this shadow drop double A game that was made by Tango Gameworks. That was a widely successful game for Microsoft's critical acclaim, especially when it came to the game awards and things like that. If you guys haven't played the game, highly do recommend checking it out. But there was rumors and rumblings going around 
that either one of those games were going to go multi-platform to help raise brand awareness again get more active users same in the case of tango gameworks and hi-fi rush maybe to get more exposure for the brand build up the ip eventually hey like hey you can play the first game and then if you want to play the sequel you can only play them on xbox and pc you know like that was where the conversation originally started but then we started to hear rumblings inside of the gaming space which is like a story that broke talking about how starfield might eventually become a you know multi-platform game that because again when starfield was originally announced or that it was about to come out and things like that there were rumblings that there was a PlayStation version in the works. It was just that it got scrapped once Microsoft fully bought out Bethesda and had and owned the rights to the studios and things like that. From there, when that report came out about Starfield possibly becoming a multi-platform game and being on both PlayStation and Switch, a lot of people started to get concerned. And then we started hearing other rumblings where we heard games like maybe Gears of War becoming multi-platform or even games like Halo. And for a lot of people, it's very concerning in that sense because again, let's be realistic here. The console fanboy wars are stupid. That is never going to change guys. The opinion has never changed. Like, yes. You may have a preference towards one system towards another. There may be some inclinations you might have towards one piece of plastic over another. But at the end of the day, this isn't some Bloods versus Crip gang war, guys. Like, again, no one cares. Like, these are just video games. Play where you want to play. Buy whatever you want to buy. Who gives a shit? I don't care what you buy, bro. Like, I don't care if your piece of plastic is more powerful than this other piece of plastic. Like, I genuinely don't care. And I don't think a lot of people do. But for some reason, this small, my, I'd say small vocal minority seems to be very annoying and very persistent on this crap but i do also understand the importance of having exclusives because yes some people can say that exclusives are dumb and yes i could understand where you're coming from from a consumer perspective if you feel like you are locked out especially if you're locked into only having one platform just because you just don't have the the income to support you know this investment that we call gaming because let's be real gaming is pretty expensive this is coming from someone that has a gaming pc that has a switch that has a ps5 has a series like like you get what i mean like this hobby is expensive so if you can only focus in on one platform well there's a reason why exclusives exist to begin with because they exist for the means of subsidizing the sales of the consoles because again the consoles are sold at a loss unless you're like nintendo and sony where you're obviously trying to focus on selling them at a profit and then also still make money at software in the terms of microsoft and the xbox yeah it's always been that conversation of selling at a loss because you can make it up with software and yes that is the point of exclusive software is that that's why you have these multi-platform games the you know third person shooters or you know fps and things like that these games that can be played across different platforms you can have these styles of games and third-party developers supporting your brand but the meat and potatoes should always come from the first party games which are traditionally more single player driven experiences this is why games like god of war spider-man horizon the last of us this is why sony is known for these style of games and yes even microsoft back in the day when they had gears of war pumping out you had halos pumping out and yes you have these forza horizons and yes these games do have online multiplayer aspects to them but they still had that single player offline experience that you could play by yourself or if you want to do land parties and things like that you can do with your friend this is what differentiated microsoft's approach to first party from sony's which was having those multiplayer aspects in there if you want it but it also comes with a complete single player experience that is not blocked behind paywalls or anything like that so i can see why for a lot of people it's very disheartening to hear these kind of conversations and hear things like oh microsoft might be going third party and completely abandon the xbox brands and i'm like yeah i can see why and for me my concerns isn't necessarily the fact of them going third party and you know pushing out all their games and other platforms yes i do have concerns regarding that my main concern if we are going by the hypothetical situations because again nothing is confirmed that if microsoft were to leave the gaming space in terms of being a hardware manufacturer 
then yes, this does reduce competition and this can lead to some very anti-consumer practices from two companies that are very known for heavily anti-consumer practices when it comes to their hardware. Sony is traditionally known for this. Rather than discounting the hardware over the span of a couple of years, they've raised the prices in other regions. They, reduce, they released ridiculously expensive accessories that make no logical sense for being as expensive as they are because as much as you want to argue with me that the PS Portal is $200, it's not worth $200 for a freaking streaming device that you have to have a PS5 for it to work to begin with. And then also the earbuds and everything that, again, don't work on Bluetooth. They work on a proprietary software and hardware that is exclusive to the PlayStation brand. Like, and then at the same time, you have all this stupid crap of raising games to $70 and things like that, which again, I understand that from the perspective of video games being more and more expensive. We've seen this from the likes of the budgets for like Horizon and God of War and Spider-Man being revealed to us. So yeah, it makes sense why they did that. But when you look at Nintendo, again, Nintendo is heavily, heavily known for anti-consumer practices. Let's be real. Yes, Nintendo makes some really, really stupid decisions. This is not rocket science or a mystery to anybody like we all know nintendo is known for doing some really shady ass shit let's just be realistic here we saw how pokemon scarlet and violet released we saw how they treated the fan base especially when it came to the wii u and the 3ds eShop getting shut down like we've seen how nintendo feels towards piracy and like all this stupid shit that they tend to do especially when it comes to releasing hardware and stuff like that like we know nintendo is known for this anti-consumer shit sony is known for this anti-consumer shit xbox on the other hand hasn't really done a lot of anti-consumer shit before let's just be realistic here if anything they've done a lot of good things but what happens if you remove one of the biggest players from the console space like in terms of hardware all that does is leave the other two unchecked because let's be real nintendo has also gone on record and stated they are not in the market to compete with sony with microsoft because let's be realistic here they don't necessarily have to compete with them. Like look at the Nintendo Switch sales. The Nintendo Switch by itself, based off the recent financial reports that are released in February, have sold over 139 million Switches. That's already more than almost every single Xbox ever sold, 360, Xbox One, and even currently the Series X and S. And again, it's already overtaken. The, the Switch has already outsold the PS4, the PS3. It's about to outsell the PS2 and the ps1 so i'm like do they really need to compete in that aspect not really their user base is very loyal for a reason and the same thing goes for software they've already pumped over 1.2 billion pieces of software and that's only going to keep increasing and nintendo has already stated again they don't need to compete with sony and microsoft they don't view themselves as competitors if anything it's always been microsoft and sony that have viewed themselves as competitors this is why it's important if you're looking at this as a two-player race if one person drops out the other one is left unchecked because that is always the benefit of having you know options in the marketplace when there's options there's competition it causes people to be competitive it causes the other party to be like hey we're going to increase performance but also at a reduced price well the other person could respond back like hey we'll match that performance but we'll go at an even lower price you get what i mean like there are different ways to approach competition in a healthy marketplace but at the end of the day having multiple options in a marketplace is key for a healthy marketplace i think we can all agree on that so what happens when you remove one of those players you leave somebody completely unchecked and that is a scary thing to think about this is why i can understand why xbox fans and things like that like people that have supported the xbox brand or even bought into the series x series s generation feel betrayed if this is true because again the promise that was made when the activision blizzard acquisition happened but even before that when the bethesda acquisition happened was that xbox was going to be committed to delivering first party experiences to xbox consumers whether it be through game pass on xbox or pc that was the direct quote from phil spencer was that the xbox brand is going to make this decision of buying bethesda and then eventually activision blizzard for the sole benefit of delivering exclusives to the xbox brand which is pc mobile and xbox consoles so you can understand why some people are disheartened when they hear these rumblings of that promise essentially being broken and maybe changed now 
there is some good news to all this, which is next week, as Phil Spencer has stated on X or Twitter, because let's be real, it's still Twitter, even though we call it X, but on Twitter, Phil Spencer has already posted a comment stating that next week that they do hear y'all, they hear the conversations going on online, and that next week they will be prepared with a full breakdown of the financial plans for the Xbox brand going forward. Now, it doesn't necessarily confirm nor deny any of the rumblings that are going on right now, but it just states that, hey, next week we will have a fully detailed and prepared plan for what is the future of Xbox going forward. And yes, I could understand why a lot of people are disheartened or they feel even more concerned by hearing that because there is no downright or outright, I'd say, disconfirmation or just basically plain out stating, hey, we are not changing our goals, our vision for the Xbox brand. All it is is we are adjusting our business strategy for something different. And this is where we've seen some crazy commentary going on online. People saying Phil Spencer is the reason that Xbox is dead or that the brand is dying, that the glory days of Xbox are now behind us, which again, I grew up with the glory days because I had the 360. I still say the Xbox 360 was probably the greatest generation of video games to ever take place because you just had high quality games. The online multiplayer experience was top notch. Like there's just something about that Xbox 360 experience that for a lot of people, if you love Xbox, you will always go back to that and remember those good old days because that was the quote unquote golden age of video games during that time period. Before the Xbox One shat the bed and focused on this all online, like TV, DVD, you got what I mean? Like this really stupid, I guess, misdirection or trying to change the direction of the Xbox brand into something that it wasn't until Phil Spencer had to come in and completely fix it last minute. But I don't think Phil Spencer is the death of Xbox. I don't think he's doing decisions to end the brand. At the end of the day, this definitely comes off more as a, a business trying to find new ways to generate revenue because at the end of the day, it's still a publicly traded company. At the end of the day, they are still trying to make the shareholders happy because the stock price at the end of the day is what matters because stock price high, shareholders happy, stock price low, shareholders are mad. But again, there is no outright confirmation that they're just going to go fully third party. There is no confirmation that they're going to exit the console space. If anything, there's even other rumors now emerging out saying that, yes, Microsoft is preparing for the next generation of consoles, that they're considering ideas of doing the traditional high end console similar to like the Xbox Series X and that the other skew would be this more switch like style dockable handheld, which for many people, people have been asking for Microsoft to consider stepping into this space. The fact that Microsoft has never truly made a handheld style device, or in this case, like now the switch is popularized at this hybrid style console or even like VR and AR some, because again, Microsoft has not made some Xbox licensed VR AR headset or things like that. So I do feel like next week we're going to be surprised by what they announce in terms of the business strategy going forward. Like what are some of those changes happening? Is this confirming that the next generation is gonna come sooner? Is this confirming that Microsoft's approach to how they wanna do consoles, how they wanna do generations, are they going to do it differently or are they going to go out and say, Hey, like we are going to push some of our console exclusive games and push them onto other platforms to help generate more revenue and to build up more interest towards the Xbox brand. And so that it just has more exposure to these new IPs and things like that as they're developing them. But there are concerns at the end of the day that Microsoft might just completely push all their games multi-platform, have them maybe exclusive to Xbox for like a couple months and then push them out to other platforms very shortly after. And I can see why a lot of people would be very upset with that. I'm not going to lie to you. But at the end of the day, Microsoft is probably also noticing that the console sales are stagnant, that Game Pass subscriptions are starting to become stagnant to a point that it feels like there's a plateau that has been reached and it only makes sense from a business perspective that they want to branch out and maybe put Game Pass on PlayStation or put Game Pass on the Switch and get access to those larger user bases or even maybe get access to, I guess, help some of their IPs gain more access to a larger player base. Because Microsoft has already stated they're in a third place. This was already common 
this was, I guess, common knowledge or open information based off the Microsoft Activision court trial that happened recently, where a lot of those documents and information was shared to the public for public record. Now, yes, Microsoft does view themselves as third place in the console space that Nintendo and Sony definitely have a larger share of the market, even though technically Microsoft should have a larger share because again, the Microsoft owns Windows, PC gaming is very popular, very booming. At the same time, mobile gaming is also very big and Microsoft does have a big foothold in mobile gaming in comparison to Nintendo and PlayStation. But again, that's nor here nor there. I do believe though that realistically as a journalistic sake, as a tech commentator and things like that, yes, we can talk about some of these rumors. We can talk about these concerns and have an open dialogue about them. But at the end of the day, there is no hard confirmed facts like people could say exclusive exclusive like exclusive information i'm like homie you're not saying anything exclusive you're just sharing sources that could be wrong at the end of the day because remember you don't know if someone's lying to you because we've seen this happen multiple times where sources can claim one thing and then boom something else happens and it's like oh well i guess they really didn't know what they were talking about you get what i mean like at the end of the day we should wait for this big announcement that microsoft is going to have next week regarding the future of xbox because yes there are i guess some slight concerns even though based off this developer direct there were a lot of positives coming out of it we saw clear timetables for the exclusive catalog of this year whether it be avowed whether it be indiana jones whether it be hellblade 2 like we saw a more firm timetable of these games coming out through the course of a year so i genuinely think we are going to be surprised by what we see and i think it only makes sense that we just be patient with patient with the process give them time to collect their thoughts collect the information do what they have to do so that when they are ready to share next week we have a clear understanding of what is the future of xbox going forward because yes there are some genuine concerns console sales are plateauing game pass sales are plateauing or the user base for game pass is starting to plateau so they have to think of something to make more money. So at the end of the day, I don't think it's a bad thing with what we're what we're seeing right now. I think these are genuine concerns that people can have. But again, we do have to tread lightly and acknowledge that these are all hypotheticals. These are all rumors. These are not 100% fact. So until then, we should most likely just chill. But we can still talk about these concerns that are rising because at the end of the day, Microsoft leaving the console space is a very, very scary thing to think about because again, if you leave a company like Sony unchecked, they have shown time and time again, they will do whatever they want. So again, I think it only makes sense that we wait it out. Let's see what they're going to talk about and let's go from there. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Are you guys worried about Microsoft becoming a third party developer and exclusively focusing on pushing out all the games on every platform and potentially leaving the marketplace as a console developer? Or hey, are you just like, hey, these people are stupid. I don't trust new now. I don't trust the news at all. It's just we'll wait and see what happens. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Again, I do apologize because it's coming out at a later time. But again, just some of the things going on here with the personal life because again work is work and so it's kind of hard to try to balance all this stuff in but i hope you guys do enjoy the episode and thank you guys for allowing me to have a piece of your day but i hope you guys enjoy and hope to see you guys next week so see you guys bye for now hey there thank you for listening to today's episode i really appreciate it thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day and listening to today's episode if you're interested in supporting the show whether it be financially clicking the follow button or just sharing the episode it all works for me guys thank you guys so much for your time and i love you guys to death